I had five days to try and explore as much ground as possible alone. I only have with me one small meal a day. That's not very much considering all the hard work that's ahead. I'm going to need to catch some fish and maybe even forage some wild edibles to keep from getting too hungry. This is going to be a good test for my wilderness skills, my survival skills and my endurance. And we're off, off to the races. I got four kilometers just about to get across Mount Carmel Pond here. The winds aren't too bad, it's a beautiful day. Not a cloud in the sky right now. Couldn't have picked a better day to get going. to the channel and if you're new consider giving that subscribe button a tap I'd appreciate it and you'll love it well this adventure here now I'm excited for I can't wait to get going 
I have five days to try and explore as much ground as possible alone in this Avalon Wilderness Reserve in Newfoundland. It's a beautiful spot with unbelievable outdoors. It's about 1,000 square kilometers. I only have with me one small meal a day. That's not very much considering all the hard work that's ahead. I'll get by, but with all the demanding off-trail trekking, I'm gonna need to catch some fish and maybe even forage some wild edibles to keep from getting too hungry. I also have very minimal camping gear with me. I'll get into that later on. This is gonna be a good test for my wilderness skills, my survival skills, and my endurance. And it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. So let's jump right into it. So we're on the fringe of the Avalon Wilderness Reserve. It wasn't too bad coming across bit of a headwind when we got out in the middle. I came in last night, drove in, left my vehicle there on the other side, spent the evening, camped out. This morning I was just decompressing, enjoying myself, enjoyed a beautiful morning and now we're on our way. Here on the portage, got the first wild edible, but I'm not a hundred percent certain, so I don't want to take a chance way out here. But it, uh, I'm pretty certain it's a marsh cranberry, and they last over the winter. Some of them stay on, and they're ready to go, ripe as can be, full of juice. I'll take one here and just a juice bomb. I'm going to clarify 100% when I get back after this trip because that's one I'd like to have in my pocket. Not many berries on the go this time of year, none at all actually. I think just the strawberry is coming in soon. But leftover marsh cranberries, like these ones. Partridge berries can be left over as well. But there's all kinds of these here. I could fill a bucket. Lots of caribou moss here as well. That's edible. And fry that up in the frying pan with a bit of oil. Not much nutrients, but it'll fill your belly. Took my first spill and soaked. I was just walking across a bit of a trench here. I thought there was a sod of grass to step, step on. And I put my foot there right up to my waist. Had to throw the camera to keep it from getting wet. That's it. We're at the pond now. That was nothing. Only about 200 yards. Paddle across this small little pond. Then there's another one. Then another very short portage. And then we're on another lake. It's going to be like that a lot of the way. Skipping ponds from pond to pond. None of the bodies of water are too big. But big enough where I'm going to have to be careful. Watch for the wind. I don't know how far I'll get this evening. It was about two o'clock when I lifted off. So I'm just chipping away, taking in the sights and sounds. And I'll make camp when I feel like it. That's where I'm off to next. I just tied the bow line to the bottom of my bag. So when I take this bag out, I don't have it tied in here now, going across small bodies of water like this. I just lay it in there. The weight keeps it snug. For short portages over open marshy ground, I'll just take the bag out, 
this rope is tied to the bottom of it and then I can drag the raft. Where I'm going over some marsh, no worries with sticks. There's a scattered one here and there and I weave around them. The raft can take some abuse. Just like that. So I've been on the move for about four hours this afternoon. It's just past 6 p.m. I could move on a bit further, cover some more ground for maybe another two hours. That will give me an hour to set up for Derek. But I'm passing by a nice spot now. I caught some dandy trout there before. It'd be nice to stock up on them early in this trip. So I think I'm gonna camp out near here. Go test that spot out and see what happens. Nice spot for the tent there. I laid there many years ago. And I can't wait to lay there again. So, my five meals, one per day for this trip, consist of potatoes, a pouch a day. But on night one, tonight, I get a treat, real potatoes with an onion. Each night with the potatoes, or I could eat this for breakfast, I can eat it whenever I want throughout the day, I could eat all of it right now and have none of it and try to fish the rest of the time, it's up to me. But with the potatoes each day goes a can of sardines. Two, three, four, and tonight, tuna. Hopefully I'll catch some fish, then I'll have a feed. Other than that, I just have olive oil to cook up the fish, put a bit in with the potatoes, whatever. But it's nice to have a bit of this, good calories. 200 milliliters just a little more than that other than that I just got a little bit of ground coffee some instant coffee spices and a few tea bags that's it slam that back in there for my limited gear selections I got this bag which is just my electronics camera gear solar panel and one notebook a bag of clothes, sleeping bag, tent, tarp, rain gear, sleeping pad. Actually, I have two, a Thermarest foam pad and a very thin military pad. I just combined them together lately. That works pretty good. My fishing rod. I have a spear rod and reel just in case. Since I'm relying on that, small bag of some tackle and fishing line, small hatchet, multi-tool, Leatherman, fire starting supplies, fire steel, 
lighter and matches both in waterproof cases and orange in case you drop them on the ground I don't want to lose these they're important just like my axe power cord compass headlamp satellite device to GPS as well first aid kit sunscreen some fly dope my toothbrush and floss and the toothpaste is there and a pair of glasses just a cup a uh, one liter water canister a frying pan and a kettle and my spork and the rasp down there and the paddle and I got a little patch kit for it and the inflation bag that blows it up so not too much there but enough to get by so I'm gonna get the tent up now get everything stowed away then get after some trout getting hungry all I had today was one pancake for breakfast this morning in the tent with a coffee. That was my treat to start the trip. That bog hole got me good. Luckily there's a nice breeze now. I'll light him up in the tree to dry for a minute. I'm just boiling the kettle for a quick coffee now before I goes fishing. I'm gonna lay back in the tent and see what she's like. See if she's a good spot to lie on. I know it is. But I still want to lie in her for just a second. Just a minute. Oh! Right off the bat, I know she's good. Oh, what a dandy spot to lie down. Home sweet home. <laughs> yes, sir. Nice trout. There's more out there. Bit bigger than the first one. <laughs> what a feed I'm gonna have tonight. Get that hook back out there. That's a dandy trout. I tried to put this one back. I hooked him bad underneath the gill. He's not very big, but he was having a hard time getting going out there. So I gotta keep him. He probably wouldn't have survived anyways. Another nice one. 
Oh, I lost him. <laughs> I knew I was pushing it, trying to haul him in there. That's okay. I should have got closer. That's four now. Two of them are a nice size. Definitely over half a pound. The other two are normal pan size. So I'm going to try to see what else I can get. I'm hungry now, so it'll be a big feed this evening. But I want a big breakfast tomorrow as well to get me going. So I need more. This is a nice one. Biggest yet. This is great. Watching the sunset. Bringing this big trout in. This is what it's all about. River trickling. That's a nice one. That's over the pound mark. Not an absolute monster, but a nice trout. That's gonna be a good meal. That one's a ish. I put him back. Landlocked salmon. When I'm catching those brookies, I don't need one an ish. The trout bag's getting heavier now. I'm just about at my limit. Five pounds plus one. I'll hit that before I hit 12. Because the fish are nice size. I'm going to move on tomorrow, and I don't know what I'll get into, so I'm going to keep a nice view, have a good feed tonight, another big feed tomorrow, and I can even carry some with me to have for lunch tomorrow or, or for supper, because I don't got much rations with me to keep me going. Not to keep up a good pace anyways and enjoy myself. I'm going for a big whopper now. Anything else I'm going to put back. I only have a single hook on it. I'm not doing too much damage to the fish. Okay, I got a dandy here now. Taking my time with him. It's been a great evening, and I'm grateful for it. Big thanks to the outdoors for giving me this when I need it. Out here all day, fogging away, paddling hard, portaging, making camp, taking in the beauty, appreciating it. And now I got a nice bag of trout. Another one to add to it. About a pound or so. You spend some time here, you get some bigger ones. <clears throat> For sure. They're out there. But I'm happy with what I got right now. It's time to clean these up now and get back to camp and uh, <laughs> fill my belly.
Alright, that's the last one of the evening. You're not bad either. What a way to end a day. The wind's died right off. It's nice and calm. Scattered birds chirping. Loons are crying. I got a nice bag of trout there. I'm gonna go feed my starving appetite here now. I'll put back a lot of trout here this evening. Okay, just back at camp. I'm gonna have a quick bag of potatoes now, just to tie me over. Then I'm gonna fry up some trout. I'll save the real potatoes and the onion for tomorrow night. I don't want to mess with that now, it's a bit late. About 10.30. Da -de -da, de -da, de -da, de -da. So I'm gonna get a good feed into me. And go on a tent and call it a night. Sleep will come easy. Out in the sun all day, the fresh air. Ah, it's gonna be nice. A nice peaceful snooze. I haven't ate since about 10 a.m. this morning. Oh, 12 hours ago, 12 and a half hours ago. That was a big thick pancake. So I'm gonna dig into this food here tonight. Loving the mashed potatoes lately. Mmm, very creamy. Added my little camp spice mix, and they get hot, nice and spicy. I've been getting them over sidekicks more because I got a lot of vitamin C in them. Not a lot, but 20 to 25 percent of your daily intake comes from one pack. So nothing wrong with that. You don't get that in the sidekick. Lots of sodium to replenish those electrolytes. That's good stuff. Drop of oil to fry the trout in. That's a nice big chunk of trout there. Yes, sir. Mm. Some crispy skin. Crispy tail. I've seen someone mention before to eat the tails. I do a lot of times, not all the time, but in a situation like this, where I want to get the most out of the fish, I eat the tails. I could even boil the fish if I wanted to. That would maximize, because I get all the nutrients from the skin and the broth, everything from the bones. That's nice meat there. Coming right off the bone. Cooked to perfection. Anyways, 
eat this and hit the bunk. Good night. I'm up and at them now, it's just past 6am, it's a nice cool morning, not a fly, it was crystal clear out there, the atmosphere, about 20 minutes ago, I could see the hills miles away, and now the fog's after swooping in, we're not far from the ocean, maybe 20 kilometers as the crow flies behind us, so that's where the fog came from. The sun's up there. Be nice if it burned off again. That's Newfoundland for you. Anyways, I'll soon be out taking on the day. Get a cup of coffee now and a few trout in me. Grasshopper, is it? <laughs> Look at that thing. This will keep me going. Here today, good fuel. Not a complete uh, coverage of the diet, but I'm getting some proteins and fats in there. I'll be good to go. <coughs> Holy fish bones. Choking on fish bones. It's nice and calm here today, so I don't get the bag across, tied on, I just got it jammed in the raft, and that's fine, it's kind, I gotta kick my legs up like this, but it's cozy, it's like sitting on the couch, just got my rod laid there, the tripod is just poked through the one of the loops on my pack there, I got a bit of stuff down here, a couple of extra batteries and some sunscreen and fishing tackle and stuff worms are underneath and then up front underneath the bag in a nice shady area is the trout in a bag with some
dent moss wrapped around it. So that'll keep it cool for the day. I wouldn't want to do it again with the same fish tomorrow. You get by, but they'll be nice and fresh this evening this way. Still good to go. So it's a beautiful float. Just did a short portage over to this lake, making my way through the reserve. Big ridge behind me, couple big ridges. Beautiful, wide open. Might see a caribou up there. The numbers are low here in this reserve, but they're still around. I've been through here before, this part of the reserve, many times, and I love it. But today I'm looking to get to a spot I haven't been to before, somewhere new, mix it up. It's about 18 kilometers away. Well, only maybe 16 now, because we're a couple in for sure. So it's over on the western boundaries. Look forward to getting over and checking it out, seeing what the fishing's like over there. I don't really need to fish now with all the trout I got there. I might try at a couple spots now at the mouth of some brooks, but there's no point to having more than what I need. I'll release any if I get them. I could get by on what I got now for the rest of the five, well, four and a half days. The bit of potatoes and the canned sardines and all them trout, for sure. I'd be pretty hungry if I never caught no more, but I'd get by. When I fish later on this evening, I'll keep those fish. That way they'll be more fresh for tomorrow. After 24 hours, they start getting bad. A bit grimy, so there's no need to do that. I'll catch them as I need them. I'm just gonna drift along now. The winds at my back is lovely. Paddle a bit, drift a bit. Got another little portage soon. Didn't into another big size pan. I'm on the lookout for big game over on the barren areas like over here. Could be moose, caribou. Black bear are very rare in here. But they've been sighted. You never know. I believe it was only about a year ago when a black bear was sighted near the coast down by the ocean back beyond where I started. So they creep in. Basically this part of Newfoundland is is a big area. I don't know if it's a hundred kilometers in width. It's a peninsula. Anyways, it's narrowly connected to the mainland part of Newfoundland where all the black bears are. And they don't too often come over to our section. This area. We got a few minutes of upstream work here. Talking away from that main flow. Just navigating this big pond now. There's about three kilometers to get across. It's 
called Bloody Pan. It's a bloody good time. <laughs> bloody good time out here. Looking at a few white caps starting to show now out on this crossing. Thankfully, just as I'm getting to the other side, just in around that point there, I'll get shelter. But when I left on the opposite side of the lake, of course, it was like glass, the wind's coming off that shore. But now I'm about two and a half kilometers out here across and it's getting a bit choppy nothing too alarming but I'm going to be careful stay sharp I always got to be on when I let my guard down that's when things go wrong That's a nice one. Okay, it's a bit calmer over here. Tucked around this point. I can relax a little now. The main part of the pond out there is getting worse by the minute as we move into the mid section of the day. So it's mid-afternoon now, I'm going to take a break, have a little lunch, a trout, it's warm out, so this is a nice spot, nice shady area in the woods, it's going to be good, then I'll be back on the move. So there's lots of stuff around to have a fire here, I'm going to use some old man's beard as a, a starter. That's not a good square edge on this knife on my fire on my Leatherman. I'm gonna to have to use the saw. That's more square, produces a better spark. I don't got my big knife with me that I usually use on this. It has a nice square edge. So while I'm waiting for that fire to die down there, just going to show you the bit of cookware I got with me. This old frying pan here, I only got it last year, it's super lightweight, nothing to it. Great size for me coming out solo. It's the MSR skillet, aluminum alloy, very light, got this little handle that you press a button here, it clips off, you can store it without the handle and put the handle in you know with your fork or you can do it like this and snap it on press the button and it folds up there but because I nest my kettle in here I don't do it that way when I put the kettle in I just lay this in here a little piece of rag I got keeps the kettle from scratching up the pan then I lay this in then I take off the clip, like that, and I put it all in this bag. The kettle is a GSI, also aluminum alloy, very light. I think it's, it's about a liter, but up to the spout is 750 milliliters. So again, a good size for a solo kettle. Perfect kit for me out on my own. Put that with the lightweight titanium spork. 
and a cup, I'm good to go for the long haul. I took that little green water canister with me. I didn't really need that. Could have left that behind. But it just saves a bit of time going back and forth to the pond to get water. And that one's fairly light as well. It's a different model. I bought it there uh, recently. Same as a Nalgene bottle. So it's light. But it, the difference between that one and a Nalgene is that this one can keep your water colder throughout the day. Or even better if I want to take a coffee with me on the move. You know, later on in the day the coffee's still nice and warm. So it acts as a bit of a thermos as well. I'm making a soup out of the trout there. I got some water in there filling up that frying pan. It'll be nice to sip on along with the trout. I had a couple bay leaves in with my spices too. Threw them in for some little extra taste. It'll be a fine lunch here in the woods. Gotta get my boots off now, let my feet air out. That's good to do on brakes, especially if your footwear is a bit damp like mine. Still wet from falling in yesterday. I've stayed clear of the water for the most part today, but I did go down into a couple little bog holes on one of the portages. Oh, there we go. That's good. That's the good stuff. Let them dry right there now. There's always a little clothes hanger conveniently nearby. Time to flip them over now and dig in. Get back on the water then after a little sit back. Oh, ho, ho. that's the stuff that will make me healthy right there. Nice fish soup. Oh, that bay leaf adds a nice taste to it. Let them cool out for a minute. Boiling fish is not that crisp, greasy pan fry fish, but it's convenient, it's quick. Just put them in the pot and they're done a lot quicker than they would be if you fry them. You're getting more nutrients from the skin and the bones, the head, all that stuff I got in there. So it's nice to mix it up. Variety is the spice of life. That seems to be cool enough now, I'd say. Let's see. Mmm. Ooh, that's the pan's hot. It's too hot to put to my lips yet. I can even see in the soup where the the oils from the fish came out. There is some fat in there. They are lean, but there is fat in there. Of course, out doing what I'm doing now. It'd be nice if I could, you know, shoot one of the ducks that I seen yesterday. Or shoot any other game, you know. Partridge, grouse, fly, get out of there. I don't want you right now. Partridge, uh, grouse, and rabbits, and you know, even a moose or something. But hunting season is closed, so we'll stretch it out on the fish. There's fat in there if you make a little soup like this. Oh, cool off a minute. But that meat comes right off the bone. Oh, yeah, mmm. It doesn't lack in flavor either, but uh. Some spice and stuff thrown in there. Not at all. If I didn't have any spices, I'd be cooking them over the fire, roasting them, and then they'd get a nice taste from the wood. Maybe you use like a, a blueberry bush. Blueberry bush add nice flavor when you're smoking. I've done that before with caribou, caribou meat. Time don't be long going. I've been here now 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Don't be long going. I'm going to keep eating this now and carry on. You can see the little fat bubbles in there. All 
a number of people do paddling trips here in the reserve so to keep my trace to a minimum I just doused that area where I had the fire with six or seven bottlefuls of water soaked it real good it was only a small spot then I put a bit of moss over it gave that a soak only took me five minutes you can tell I had a fire there that will grow in and of course you won't notice it this is a reserve it's supposed to be kept as pristine as possible and little things like that help I was strapping these sleeping pads onto the back of the raft there at the start of the trip but now I'm putting it here on the pack it's easier I don't gotta go doing any extra tying I just strap it under here when I pull down this strap to secure the top of the dry bag and it's good to go Almost there. Okay. A little brocky on there, but he went on himself. I'll get some trout in a bit. I was just trolling, looking for a big one. Little baby rapid here. steady all sacks left behind I just need to trip to myself and a future expedition is going to require me to be on my own with no dogs so I'm getting myself used to that as well this is wonderful though everything's nice and green all around me, spruce, fir, juniper, scattered birch in there. I've seen lots of sign of moose tracks, but haven't laid eyes on one yet. Another little ledge here I gotta go down. A lot of blow down everywhere in these woods. Not easy to walk through. Oh. One rock, another rock here. Things are a bit shallow.
Now this is rocky. I'm not gonna get too far before I bottom out. Better off to get out and walk the raft now. Can't be too rough on the raft. I don't want to go messing with holes. Here goes the paddle. This is the beginning of the new area. Up this stream, then into a series of ponds, new country, new experiences. Let's go. It's quickly getting shallow though. Time to get out for a look. Took me worm to bugger. Just got a couple small ones there from that spot, but I'll need them tomorrow. If I don't get none later on this evening, add them to the pot.
so I'm a few kilometers away from uh, my goal for today, which was to get into this new section, which I'm into now, but there's particular ponds I wanted to get to. And I think that's gonna be it for today. I started following up this small little creek, and then I got so far, and I couldn't haul the raft behind me. Woods gets a bit thick here on the sides of this. So I dropped everything, and I walked on the remaining about one kilometer, got up to the pond. I think I'm gonna have to pack down the raft and carry it up, uh, strapped to the back of my bag, deflate it, all that good stuff. I might be able to drag it, I don't think so though. It doesn't look to be any real good openings. A lot of sharp sticks on the ground as well, old dead ones. So I don't want to mess with that. I think I can save it for tomorrow. Better off making a camp now. On the way back there, I found a nice spot in a, under a shady bit of woods right on the side of the creek. So that's where I'm gonna go now and set up camp. I'll push onward tomorrow. Up on that next pond too, there doesn't look to me any appealing campsites, just looking with the naked eye, I'm sure they're there, but knowing this one is here now, just a little ways ahead on the creek, that's a better way to end the day. It's just about eight o'clock. 15 kilometers, that's it. We're done. This is a grand way to end the day. Now we're here by the creek. Fire's gone. I'm pretty gassed. Oh, got everything straightened away. I'm gonna have some potatoes and onions now in the frying pan. Then I'll do some trout. I think there's five there. Anyways, I'll have two or three this evening. Save a couple for breakfast. No fishing happening this evening because right here it's only uh, very shallow. And I'm good anyways. If I really needed to, I'd go up by the creek, up by that small pond and get some. But that will happen tomorrow. I'll get fish on the move. For now, I'm worried about a coffee and eat what I have, and that'll be a good evening for me. Trout and onions are looking good, pretty much done. This is a piece of birch bark. I got a few big pieces I've had for a while just keep them in the bag use them as plates I picked this in central Newfoundland I'm in eastern Newfoundland now so I've taken a few around with me disposable plates using them as fire starter or just throw them in the fire nature's plate strong too that's one thin layer Third big meal of fish today, brook trout. It's just as good every time. But this was, I think it was three. They're a fair size. 
Oh, I'm having trouble getting it all into me. I haven't even got to the potatoes and onions yet. Might not need it. High protein. It's filling. It fills you up. And that's what the trout is. Now, a bit of fat from the olive oil. And then I get some carbs from the daily potatoes. Covering all three food groups. But definitely getting a lot more protein and fat. Every now and then I'll get a little onion. Every now and then I'll get a little onion. GoPro, stop recording.